Emily from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Saturday, June 25th. So we have the moon moving out of that very determined, very fixated, low and slow earth energy of Taurus, and we will be making our way into Gemini energy. So the moon will be going void, of course, around 3.03 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we will lock into that Gemini energy 7.14 p.m. So about four hours there late afternoon that we will likely feel a little bit cray cray. We will likely feel a little bit unsure, uncertain, a little bit confused, maybe semi chaotic. That's usually what we can expect when the moon is void, of course. Of course, we don't want to make any decisions, any commitments. We don't want to choose a direction or a choice point in this time. We may feel the urgency to do so, but it is not the correct time for us to do so. We are also just entering into the new moon window. We are also entering into the window in which Neptune is preparing to go retrograde. There are eight different aspects taking place here today, and seven of them involve the moon. The moon in Taurus will be semi-squaring Jupiter. Now, this is a little bit of a tension point, and as you know, the moon in Taurus doesn't really want to do a whole lot of thinking about the future. We want to find peace and harmony, stability and happiness and joy in the present moment, and we are definitely struggling to do so with some of the circumstances that are popping up for us. The moon in Taurus, semi-squaring Jupiter, who is all about growth and expansion. He's in Aries energy for the first time in 12 years, just wanting to get things started, just wanting to jump into something new, create new opportunities, create new reality. This is a little bit frustrating. That Aries energy just wants to take action now, think about the consequences later, and of course the moon in Taurus wants no part of that. We have to be very thorough, very calculated, very strategic in the energy, in the actions that we are currently thinking about taking, always thinking about the long-term consequences because we want to be pouring into things that are going to be around for the long term. So there's a little bit of a inner conflict there. Um, Jupiter, again, likes to magnify whatever it is that we're currently thinking and feeling. And right now we're currently thinking and feeling in a frustrated energy. The moon will conjunct, come up next to bump into team up with the true node who is also in Taurus energy. Now this could be a good or bad energy. I'm going to give you both just to see how it's going to manifest for you. Now emotionally speaking, we could have a breakthrough here. We could understand what it is that we want to do, where it is we want to go, what it is we have to grow, what it is we have to build and create. We could have an aha moment where we are kind of seeing the steps, the patterns, the actions that need to be taken one by one in order to actually create a plan, create a strategy, and of course, prepare to make those movements to get us from where it is that we're at to where it is we desire to be. That true node is our soul's destiny point. It wants us to be on the right path in order for us to actually reach our goal, reach our destination. Many of us very confused right now. We don't know what that end goal looks like, but what we do know is certain elements, certain circumstances that we are moving away from. The negative part, I guess, that could manifest out of this is that we're so freaking overwhelmed that we don't know what the next step is, that we get kind of fixated, we get stuck in our mental plane, in our emotions, we get hooked up on the details, we are a little bit overwhelmed in our current circumstances, and you know what, it just doesn't feel so good. With this particular energy, we could definitely manifest the not so nice parts of this Taurus energy which is being cold and rigid, detached, a little bit self-absorbed. We could be stubborn. We could lash out. It is a lot of friction. And we are, you know, feeling that friction because, again, we're in the new moon window. Things always get dark, a little bit tension-filled right before a new moon. And we have to experience that breakdown before we are going to have that breakthrough. 
Now, Mercury is going to bump into Pluto. We talked about this a little bit in yesterday's forecast. Mercury, of course, ruler of the mental plane, ruler over information, communication, and how it is that we express ourselves in Gemini energy, exploring new degrees that didn't get explored before Mercury went retrograde a couple of months ago. Pluto, of course, retrograde in Capricorn energy, the great transformer trying to show us the past, trying to show us our inner energy on where it is that we feel powerful or powerless, where it is that we have bossed up or where it is that we failed to boss up. And with these two kind of bumping into each other, I am going to say we're going to be wound for sound, wound up in all the wrong ways. There's a lot of mental tension. We're very hyper focused on a certain path, a certain choice. We're almost obsessed. We're looping in our head. We have negative narratives popping out. We have a high level of irritability. We are almost looking at the information of our current circumstances with a little bit of suspicion, you know, like, well, what's that about? Well, that's not trying to teach me. Well, this person said that. What did they mean by that? Are they coming for me? Are they lying, uh, lying to me, right? There's a lot of questioning going on, but it's a questioning from a negative standpoint, let's say. And a lot of this is due to the fact that we have to unearth and reveal another layer of what it is that is blocking us mentally, emotionally, and sometimes physically from actually bossing up, from actually taking the role of power, the role of authority in our own lives. Many of us kind of get consumed in the mental plane looking for something else externally or someone else externally to blame for our current circumstances, for the way that things went down in certain, you know, relationship dynamics or job dynamics, when essentially speaking, it's all about the perspective, it's all about the understanding, it's all about the attitude. And this energy, although is not pleasant, does kind of need to put the pressure cooker energy on us in order for us to get real with what it is that we've been doing in our own mental plane, with our own negative ass narrative, with our own, you know, very narrow minded perception and understanding that has led us to constantly be looking outside of ourselves for someone else to take the blame for something to be at fault when realistically it is at us that has failed to evolve and instead chosen for us to revolve. Now, again, this needs to happen. We are in a very interesting window of energies right now where things are shifting. If you haven't felt the shift since the solstice, I don't know what you've been doing. Now, we're not saying good, bad or otherwise, but there's definitely been a shift. And now we are peeling back the layers, preparing, if you will, for the dark phase of the moon where the new moon highlights for us where it is that we got to get rid of some crap in order to jump into something new because we are in cancer season, cancer energy approaching this new moon in cancer. We are passive aggressive. We are highly defensive, super protective. We are a little bit too attached to the old ways of doing things. We are very nostalgic. We are wearing those rose colored glasses, even though Neptune's going to go retrograde and slap those puppies off of our cute little faces for us to see things in the light in which they are and not in a light in which we wished that they would be. But this is all kind of the stripping away process of us realizing where it is that new foundations, new new boundaries, new elements, new structures, new relationships, new ways of thinking, new ways of taking care of ourselves needs to be initiated. But of course, in order for all that to happen, we got to strip away what isn't working. And this particular aspect is definitely going to do just that. And it is going to be a little bit of a tension filled aspect in our mental plane, because right now the mental plane is the root cause is the thing to blame on why it is that we can't seem to break free, why it is we can't decide, why it is we can't choose, why it is that we can't see the bigger, brighter picture that awaits us. Because again, many of us still very much fixated on why things happen the way they did. The moon is going to bump into Mars in not the nicest way. Let me just say here, there's a high probability of a situation in our exterior realms that we have no control over 
popping off, really adding to this mental tension of Mercury and Pluto playing its little aspect game. The moon bumping into Mars, the god of war in his place of power in Aries, all fired up. Now, what I would like to see happen, which I don't think is going to happen, but there is, you know, still a possibility that we can embody the pros. What I would like to see happen is that we have a new determination. We have a new inspiration. We have a new motivation that we boss up. We unleash our inner warrior. We're ready to start cutting the cords with the past. We are starting to be a little bit more familiar with the fact that if we actually want change, then we have to leave our comfort zones in order to get it. That's what I would love to see. We would love to see something pop off in our exterior realm to push us into that mode, into that attitude, into that emotion, into that perspective so that we can gear up, prepare to take the actions needed in order to bust out of our comfort zone. However, what I feel is most likely to happen is that we're going to be triggered and activated, wound up in all the wrong ways. We're going to get a little bit irritated, a little bit angry, a little bit frustrated, and we are going to project our frustrations out into the world, likely on people that are very undeserving of them. And we are going to create a little bit of a tantrum, a little bit of a dramatic situation for ourselves that we will have to clean up eventually that we definitely don't need. But again, Mars being in Aries, it is uh, a little bit of a firecracker type of energy. And where Mars and Aries energy are very connected to the ego identity, we lack the ability to pop out of our reactive state and move into the observer state. Therefore, we're likely to pop off in all the wrong ways. Adding to this little cluster F, we have the moon still in Taurus, squaring, creating tension and conflict with Saturn, the Lord of Karma himself. Let me just say that this is a time when we are going to be angry and frustrated with the roles and responsibilities and the commitments that we've made. This is when negative Nancy is going to kind of kick in and we're going to be highly frustrated with our current circumstances. Now, Saturn is retrograde, meaning we have to do an inner reflection over all that we've kind of been dealt over the last year, whether or not we rose to the occasion to boss up, to stand in our power, to take on a new role of authority, or whether we failed to do so and therefore we're still sitting in our four walls that we claim to be our comfort zone, complaining about every single physical aspect of our lives. Highly probable it is going to be the latter part. The moon in Taurus, again, very rigid, very stubborn, very fixated, very focused on the here and now. Uh, Saturn in a retrograde, very reflective over how we got ourselves in these particular situations with these roles and responsibilities and commitments in order for us, because he's in Aquarius energy, to figure out how we can free ourselves, how we can liberate ourselves from these. And we do that by thinking about a futuristic vision or goal or dream that we want to be actually living in. And then we bust that down into manageable pieces to see what it is we actually have control over in the here and now. Now, the moon in Taurus is a great energy for us to find the happiness, the joy, the pleasure in the present moment, regardless of how kind of unpleasant the circumstances may be. We're very high up on trying to find happiness and joy in every single thing. But right now we're being rubbed the wrong way. We need to be rubbed the wrong way in order for us to realize where it is that we feel trapped the most so that we can strategically create a plan in order to liberate ourselves from the roles, responsibilities, and commitments that we are currently in that are weighing very heavily on us, that are sucking the life out of us that we no longer wish to experience. We get a little bit of help with the moon in Taurus, sextiling Neptune. This is a beautiful energy. Again, Neptune preparing to go retrograde. So these are the last little aspects that are going to kind of stick with us for the next couple of months of reflection and review. Um, the moon in Taurus works very well with the Piscean energy. It's literally where we can bring our dreams to life. That Piscean energy is, you know, out of the realm of this physical realm. It's our dreams. It's our creativity. It's our soul self, our intuition. And when we let ourselves kind of float off into la la land and gain that vision, gain that dream, we can, if we have control over our energy, we can bring it into the physical body. We can understand in our mental plan 
plane, what it is that we have to do to actually bring it to life. Emotionally speaking, we get to agree with our mental plane in order for our physical bodies to then be engaged to take the actions necessary in order to bring certain elements to life. This is a beautiful energy as well, because we're also grounding out our dreams, our wishes, our desires, we're bringing them into our physical body and allowing our physical senses to actually indicate to us what feels good, what does not. That's how we use our physical body in order to gauge whether or not we're in alignment with our ego with our spirit. That's how we have to kind of project ourselves into la la land into a futuristic realm and bring ourselves back into this present moment to see how we feel about it to see if we can embody that energy to see if we can stay motivated and inspired enough in order to fight through the physical challenges and obstacles that we're currently being faced in order to one day actually be able to be living the dream in which feels so good and so ooey and gooey we also get a lot of help here because 303 right before the moon in Taurus goes into a void, of course, on its way into this Gemini energy. The moon trines with Pluto. A trine is a beautiful energy. Pluto, the great transformer, indicates that there is a lot going on in our inner realms, especially between our psyche and our heart space. Of course, the moon ruling over our heart space in Taurus that just wants to find the happiness and joy in the, ple in the pleasure in this present moment. What we can kind of take from this is that the earlier aspects of tension, of conflict, really illuminating for us where it is that we're stuck in a loop in our mental plane, where we're stuck in some bad patterns and behaviors and habits in our physical realm that we're no longer aligned with. When we give ourselves permission to sit in the funk without just trying to get out of it all the time, please, please remind yourself that the funk is important. OK, you would not appreciate the non funk if you didn't sit in the funk. There is a lot to be learned from the pain and the suffering that we have to go through. We do not learn when we are happy and when we are comfortable. So just understand that the earlier tension, the earlier conflict was 100% needed because now there's a shift. There's a shift in our heart space. There's a shift in our head space. There's an aha moment. We definitely know wait, right now where it is that we have to boss up, where it is we have to take our power back, where it is we have to make some major transformations, not only within ourselves, but within our physical circumstances in order to actually be aligned with a reality that we're looking to actually manifest where we're aligned with something that makes us feel good. And, you know, Pluto being the God of the underworld tends to kind of show us the pain and the suffering to inspire us and act as a catalyst in order to, you know, light the fire under our ass that we absolutely need in order to see things through. We will wrap the day up with the moon now in Gemini at 9.38 p.m., semi-squaring Chiron. Semi-square is a tension point, doesn't feel very good. We do have to just kind of remember that this Gemini energy is likely going to bring back a lot of confusion, a lot of urgency, a lot of the emotions that we felt through Gemini season. Gemini season was meant to really tear us apart, heart and our head, our physical realm versus our spiritual realm, our intuition versus our logic, in order to look at the very extreme past decisions, directions, choices, options, look at how extreme they were, and really figure out a happy medium to find compromise, to find that common ground. We had a lot of wheels spinning in Gemini season. Many of those wheels still is spinning early on in Cancer season. But a lot of the emotion, a lot of the confusion will likely be reignited now that the moon is in Gemini. So we have this, you know, this this debate, if you will, this inner conflict going on, if you will, in order for us to find our new path, what it is that we want to do with ourselves now, especially emotionally. We're very curious. Again, if you've been listening and paying attention, the solstice energy initiated a time of experimentation from now until the Lionsgate portal in early August. And this moon in Gemini has us very emotionally curious on what it is that we can do differently in order to create a different thought, a different emotion, a different outcome. So having this semi-square with Chiron, the wounded healer who is in Aries, highlighting for us our egoic identity wounds, mostly from the loss that we've had to go through, from the pain, the suffering that we've had to endure. We don't know who we are anymore. Now we want to figure it out. And sometimes... We don't know where to start. 
and we don't know how to start something new. We don't know how to reinvent ourselves. We don't know how to rebrand ourselves. And what I will say to you is that we have to use our pain and suffering, our old traumatic memories, our current uncomfortability as a guide on what it is that we know we don't want to deal with, we don't want to be, we don't want to embody, we don't want to continue in order to figure out the new path, the new direction forward. What I will say is that the moon in Gemini also making this aspect with Chiron could put us in a position where we are speaking out, where we are emotionally unloading, if you will, a lot of the wounds that we are definitely becoming very aware of that are still wide open and in most cases are having salt just rubbed right in them. And this is a time and a perfect example, especially as we approach the dark moon, this is a time where we have to use our negative thoughts, our negative emotions, our negative memories, our pain, our trauma, our suffering as a guidebook, as a compass, if you will, to our healing. Chiron, yes, highlights the wounds, but also has the wisdom within us, the resources in our lives in order to heal said wounds. We just have to pay attention. So we are kind of going through a lot. We will continue to go through this intensity building until we reach our new moon taking place on Tuesday. Again, we have Neptune going retrograde right before that as well. So there is definitely going to be some choppy emotional waters to navigate. But did we really expect anything less in cancer season? <laughs>